here we are Saturday morning and we are here to put in some garden lights for my old man he doesn't know he's just gone to work just picked up about seven of these habit spike lights relatively good quality LED bulb in them just got the driver for them and this is what I'm most excited about is the new DigiNet Satara Bluetooth dimmer uh, it syncs up with your phone so you can control it wirelessly and then you can also set uh, different scenes so you can automatically have your lights come on uh, you know from 5 till 10 at night Monday to Friday and a little earlier on the weekends um, set it up set it up however you like so first time using this one so pretty curious to see how that goes what we're thinking is because we've got a couple of these lovely um, palms and ferns put a couple of spotlights highlighting a couple of these and a nice big spotty highlighting this big shrub as we come in we have a couple more ferns and stuff and we'll put a couple in there and, and maybe one just down this end and what that's going to do is it's going to light up the rest of the garden nicely uh, while highlighting some of the nicer plants now to get started we're going to put the lights together and then we're going to basically place them out in the garden where we want them and that's going to give us the guide of where we need to run our cables Okay, so we've got all seven in place now. Let's go have a little look at where they ended up. We have one in here in the front, one in here at the back. Another one in there lighting up with this clump. Another one in there. And then just one more down, down here. going to do is basically jump off this weatherproof power point we'll probably put the driver below and then put a weatherproof box to house that um, wireless module and we'll run our cables down there into the garden bed probably across the front of the across this little strip of grass here up into this garden bed and we'll just scratch in the low voltage cable um, below all that leaf litter, leaf litter so you don't see it um, and then yeah put some weatherproof joins on them and we're good to go now we're going to have a little bit of flexibility with these once they're installed because they're low voltage uh, and they've got quite a nice lead on them we've usually got about a meter around the light and it can be quite hard to tell exactly where we need to put them so the light beam hits the right part of the tree so what we'll probably do is pop out a little bit later tonight once it's dark and once we've got them working and then we'll move them around to be exactly where we want. Uh, we've got the apprentice here just doing some of the hard yards. He's a little bit scared of the microphone. But this is Sonic, my cat. All right, Sonic, you ready to run the cables?
given that it is low voltage cable, we don't actually, it doesn't need to be buried. If it was 240 volt, it would have to be 600 mil below uh, the surface. But low voltage, we've kind of got a little bit more flexibility and we could just scratch it into the surface. Alright, sorry about that. The GoPro ran out of batteries, as did I. So I've got coffee, and the GoPro has batteries. Okay, and this is how we join the actual garden light in. So this goes up to the spike, this comes in from the transformer, and then this one goes out to the next light. Red to red, obviously, uh, and then the brown just joins in with that one. Spread the spread the cores out, and then just a nice twist together. And the same on the neutral or the negative. So again, just spread them out so they all intertwine, twist together. We get the gas and the solder. You want to heat up the copper so it's ready to take to the solder. That way the solder gets right in there. Try not to burn the insulation like that. That's heaps. And then again with the active. That is more than enough. Now, we just nip off the ends there and wait for that to cool down. Now, there's a few different ways to do this next spot, next bit. Today, I'm just going to wrap some black tape around it and then finish it off with a resin-filled heat shrink. Other times, we'll put, we'll put heat shrink on these bits individually and then heat shrink over the top. Um, doesn't really matter. Uh, I've done it numerous dis different ways over the years and I've never had issues with water intrusion or uh, shorting out between the two. I'll just do the same with the active here. And then just tape over both of them all the way back from where that outer coating of insulation starts. Now that would even be sufficient. You could you could stick this back in the garden and I'll be quite happy that water's not gonna get into that. But we're gonna take it one extra step further and this is a, uh, not a new product, but from one of my suppliers, it's, uh, they've just started offering it. And it is basically a resin-filled heat shrink. So as you heat that up, uh, a resin is released from inside and that helps uh, maintain that, that seal. So we'll have it just a little bit longer. Um, now the trick with this stuff is a nice slow heat. And you wanna kinda of circle around it as much as you can. This join with a resin filled heat shrink over the top of it would pretty much be good to be completely submerged underwater. All right. As you can see, there's a bit of resin coming out the end there. Just squeeze that end shut. And the resin will seal around the base of that cable.
right, this is the part I've most been looking forward to, is getting into the guts of this thing. The Satara Bluetooth Dimmer by DigiNet. Warning sticker. And the unit itself. Part. Okay, so it looks like we've got our cable entries up here. The incoming active, incoming neutral, and incoming earth. So they'll just be fused together internally, so you can have your active in, active out, uh, if you've got more than one cable. And then the load just goes here, and you just need the active part of the load, um, and you can just join the, the neutral earth elsewhere, or you can put it straight in there. There's a reset button here, and I believe this is a, a switch, so if you hit this, the lights will come on and off, and you can hold it and dim and stuff, I think. So what we'll need to do is basically bring the 240 volt side of this um, transformer into the load terminal here. And then this will just hook up to standard 240 volt. So this is where the low voltage cable from the garden comes back to. It's just soldered and taped um, into the driver slash transformer. And what we're going to do is we're just going to tidy this up, run this up into the back of the panel and we've joined it all in here um, we're just going to chuck it behind the panel for now uh, just a bit of a test run we're going to have to upgrade this switchboard at some point in the future because it's an absolute mess but this is what the basic wiring is going to look like we've got our active and neutral coming in uh, the neutral going out to the driver slash transformer the earth's joined and then the uh, active going out to the transformer as well so here's a nice wide uh, shot of the front garden. Um, you can see that effect it's, it's giving on the underside of those trees and uh, to be quite honest it looks awesome in person. 